are an audio source of a book, and so when students listen to a play away, it reads the book to them. Um, I wanted them in my classroom because I wanted books that students wanted to read but maybe couldn't read on their own, and so they get to listen to the book, um, and it's probably more of a challenging book than they could just read on their own. First of all, it kind of gives them the confidence they need to get a more challenging book from the library, and then it also helps them with their fluency. And so if they can listen to what a good reader sounds like, then hopefully they can model that in their own reading. My kids really like it um, because it's a new sort of technology and they are always all about that. Um, and then it just has given them the confidence to get um, more books from the library that they might not have gotten because they're not at their reading level, but it challenges them to get to that level. Is it good for you, kind of, because you get to read along with the book if you don't understand some words and if you don't know how to sign out some words. A librarian at the other school that I worked at um, wrote a grant and got them as well, so I thought, I'll try and do the same thing and see if I can get them for my classroom. It's fairly easy. Um, it's a little bit of research to find out um, how much things cost and to get a little detailed list of what you'd want. But otherwise, it's pretty easy to just talk about why you need the things that you need and how you couldn't get them any other way. So it's fairly simple. We got 20 playaways and it's about $1,000 altogether. I chose the titles from, it's an online website, and I just looked for books that were most popular in fourth grade. And so they're chapter books and they're books that I feel would be high interest for my students to read um, and maybe a little bit more challenging than what they'd be at for their own reading level. Um, I, read, I have read Marley and Me and The, the Best Christmas Pageant. I'm reading the capture and I've read Diary of a Wimpy Kid. We use them every day and so we have kind of a checkout system so if they finish one they put it back in the bucket and somebody else can choose it and we do daily five every day so they get to choose to do their play away every day if that's what they'd like to do. They're very simple to use. <laughs> we don't change out the playaways. What we get is what we get, and that playaway sticks with that book, and all it runs on is a battery. So it's very simple and easy for teachers to use. So. Research has shown over and over that reading is the best way to improve vocabulary. Uh, so it's just a great opportunity. You know, usually when I take trips to Germany with kids, it's been a long time, but I would try and pick up one or two things here and there. But um, I found a a website that's some former German teachers and they import German books and it's just great to have kids have that authentic reading material. It's, you know, textbooks are so dry and, you know, not very exciting, but the kids actually really like the little kids' books. Um, so I've even had some requests for Dr. Seuss in German, that kind of thing, because when they're familiar with the stories, it makes it easier for them to pick up. So it's just a great opportunity for them to learn some new words and, and see what they can do. So that's kind of cool. I vary what I do with them. Today, I had them just read alone for a while and try to you know, get as much as they could out of it. Some of the books are very varied in reading levels. Some of them are a little tougher than others. Some of them are quite simple, uh, just children, you know, very easy beginning children's books. Uh, but usually, the, even with those, there are a few words that they don't pick up or don't know that they can pick up with the book and the pictures. Uh, a lot of times, they like to use the the picture dictionary, but we try to avoid that <laughs> as much as possible. Um, but so they read through it on their own, and I had them write down any words that they thought they really needed to be able to understand what they were reading. And then at the end of that, had them show a partner those words or go over that with a partner. If they understood the book, all they had to do was explain to the partner what they read and show them. And that's neat too, because you remember more of what you teach somebody. So when you're showing somebody a word and showing them what it does, then they learn it better. Um, and then the, they just took turns partnering, telling them about their book or asking for help about their book. So it's just a good way to, you know, two heads are better than one kind of thing and try to figure out some words. And then they're, sometimes they're better able to use context clues. Somebody might pick up on something that the other student didn't. I did purchase a couple of books prior to getting the grant, but I can only get a few at a time. Um, you know, the, this grant, to be able to buy $500 worth of books, you know, there's no way I could just do that on my own. So it's so great to have this opportunity. And, you know, reading is so important. And I tell kids over and over again, you know, for English too, it's, it's better for any, it's better than anything you can do just to read. And even I learn new words, I learn lots of new words in English and German when I read. And so it's really fun. And it's just a neat chance for them to pick up what they're interested in and have a few minutes to just 
take a look at a book and see what they can get. You know, I don't even have a textbook for every student. It's just a classroom set. So um, I teach a different way now, but um, having these books and that ability to, to have the kids be able to read them and just pick up something that they would enjoy that's not just something dry is really great for them. I have a great love of books and so do a lot of my ELL students and with the budgets being cut back it was really hard to order books because we needed to order supplies so I wrote the grant in order to get a large variety of books so that all kids could have resources to a variety of materials not just necessarily what I taught them in class this will let them move beyond that and then a lot of kids couldn't take art class because they took year-long Spanish and so this gave them an opportunity to come in and check out some books that they might like to have so they could still work on their art. And um, so I was really pleased. I'm thrilled with the books. The kids love them. Um, and before I didn't have enough books to really let them check them out without having, and then I wouldn't have anything to have in class. Now I have enough to keep in class and the kids can check them out. Well, I did try really hard to meet the needs of all the students here, and I teach 6th, 7th, and 8th grade, and then we have kids with limited English skills. So I really, I had a lot of books for the younger kids, but I really wanted to find a few more things for the kids that um, are really wanting to pursue the arts maybe as a career someday. But I didn't want to limit it to just drawing and painting, so we have um, pastel drawing, we have paper mache, we have jewelry making, we have printmaking, we have clay, we have a wide variety of things for any interest as well. Oh, they love them and they love the fact that they can actually take it home with them now and keep them for a week or whatever to really research what they want to look at. And um, I do have kids coming in and wanting them during directed studies because then they can pursue what they want. But I'm still here if they have questions about something, they can come in and talk to me. But they love them. And the teachers love them too. I've had the office ladies came up and wanted to check out books. They're both real artsy people. So the teachers enjoy them too. I have not ordered new drawing books for at least three years just because I need every bit of money I get for supplies anymore so no there is absolutely no way that I would not have been that I would have been able to have even a couple of books so I am so grateful to the foundation for donating the money to us and and caring about Whittier kids I just was hoping that other people could see the great joy that the kids are getting from these books because you know it's there's so many variety of different things that the kids can do in the arts and this way things that they might not have known about they're able to see a book and think, oh, well, I never thought you could do that. And they can see how easy it is to pursue, pursue something they're interested in. Thank you so much for caring about Whittier Kids and the artists in this area. You have made a big difference in these kids' lives. A lot of my students would never be able to go out and purchase books like this on their own. And they probably wouldn't even have been introduced to a lot of them if it wasn't for your caring enough to give us the funds that we needed to actually get this resource started here. I just think the opportunity to, to be able to apply for a grant that there are people in our community willing to help our students and to give that money to us. I, I'm just so grateful for that. I, I can't say enough about how generous that is of people who, you know, so many people think I pay taxes, that's enough, I've done my share. And it's just awesome to have a group of people that are willing to say, you know, we want to give a little bit more and we can do things like this that we normally wouldn't be able to get. From Lowell and from 402, we just want to say thank you because we wouldn't have been able to get these any other way. And so we're very appreciative that you're um, investing not only in this classroom this year and these students, but we're going to be using these for many years to come. So it's not just a one-time investment, it's over the course of many years. So thank you.